This is problem 5-74, it's on page 255. If the load has a weight of 200 pounds, determine the X, Y, and Z components of reaction at the ball and socket joint A and the tension in each of the wires. Now the diagram is a bit detailed. I'll copy down the essential pieces that we need here. So here's the ball joint at A. This frame piece wraps around like so. This is all in one plane where the x-axis comes out this way. The y-axis is parallel to this portion of the, uh, the piece. This point here is B. This point is C. And there is a support labeled D just above point B. So there's a support wire here and there's a support wire that runs between D and C. And then there's further a support wire coming up to a point labeled F. So let me sketch some wall there or something. We'll label it F. And uh, the, there's a two foot length from C to just below F. Well, just below F is labeled E at this point. There's a weight centrally located two foot, two foot between BC, so at the midpoint of BC. BC is four feet, obviously. And then A to B is also four feet long. The height to point D from B is three foot. And I think that's all of the relevant geometry we need. Well, it would be nice to have a Z axis. So right-hand coordinate system, X into Y is Z. X rotated into Y is Z. So the free body diagram it looks something like the following. I'm going to make a, a little more extreme angle so I can get it to fit. But at A, since it's a ball joint, there can't be any moments there. So there would be an AX potentially and a Y. Notice I'm drawing these reaction forces in the positive coordinate directions. AX, A, Y, A, Z. A tension in line, well, BD here. A tension in line DC, that's supposed to go down to point C. A weight down here, which we know, and then a tension in FE. So we know the weight, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six unknown uh, forces, reaction forces. Three of them are forces in cables, so I call those tensions, and three are forces in the X, Y, and Z direction. So I'm going to start off by summing moments about the x-axis at point A. Notice I'm going to take all my sum of moments at point A so that these three unknowns disappear. My strategy is to use the sum of moment equations to calculate the tensions, or at least relate the tensions to one another and solve that system of equations. And hopefully I'll have enough where you know, I can do that. And then use sum of force equations to solve for AX, AY, AZ. So sum of moments in the x-direction about A so this direction, well, let's see. Notice that BD passes through that line and so it causes no moment about the x-axis, but DC will certainly cause, an, uh, cause a moment. So will FE and so will the weight. So let's start off with FE. We'll just work our way around. So TFE, well, that's pulling straight up with a moment arm of four feet. And notice that it causes a moment in the positive x direction, right? Because the moment arm right there, four feet, well, TFE is tending to cause a rotation this way about the x-axis, and that's positive. In the same way, DC will cause a positive moment, but we can't use all of DC because, look, we just want the vertical piece of it. Well, how much is the vertical piece? Well, think about the larger triangle. We've got a three, four, so obviously five triangle. So if we want the vertical piece of DC, all we need to do is use three-fifths of it. And then we need the moment arm for DC, which is the same as the moment arm for FE. It's four feet. 
And then the weight W causes a negative moment about the x-axis, but it only has a two-foot moment arm, so minus W times two foot. I realize we know what that weight is. It's 200 pounds, but I just put it in this way to begin. That's it. Those are the only three things that cause a moment about the x-axis. So let's simplify this down just a little bit. Um, I'm going to drop the units. Obviously, if I put in pounds here, the units are consistent. So I'll just drop the units, and uh, I can write it a bit more simply than TFE, or 4TFE, uh, plus 12 fifths TDC equals, uh, well, weight is 200 times 2 is 400. So there's one equation with two unknowns. And I'm going to call this, in fact, let me just leave the 400 on this side. So minus 400 equals 0. And I'll call this equation 1. If I sum moments about the y-axis at A, well, that's about this axis. Now, of course, all of these forces pass through that point, no moment. But now I'm going to have one, two, three, four terms because, look, each one of these has a piece in the vertical direction and causes a moment about the y-axis because there's an x-arm axis for each. So let's start off with the weight, for example. The weight times 4 foot is one of the pieces because think about it. The weight is going to cause a, a, a moment about the y-axis in the positive sense, whereas all three of these others will be in the negative sense. Let's take care of DC next. So minus TDC, I'm going to take, again, the vertical piece of it multiplied by its four uh, foot long X moment arm. So that would be three fifths times four feet. Okay. That's TDC. And then FE will have a two foot moment arm. It also causes a negative moment about the y-axis. And then DB has a four-foot moment arm as well. BD, DB, doesn't matter. I don't really care about the order of the subscripts. This is not a position vector, so there's not a from two that I'm really worried about. I mean, I, you could say there is. I mean, this is technically from B to D, and this was technically backward. It should be from C to D. You know, the way I've drawn it, same thing here. This is from E to F. But F, E, E, F, I, I don't really care. I'm just going to use them, okay? So the last one is, is uh, B, D. And, of course, B, D has a four-foot moment arm. So minus T, B, D times four-foot. And this sum had better come out to zero, so let me just put it in here. There we go. And that's it, right? Because think about it. The Y component of TCD can't cause a moment about the Y axis. Okay. So if we simplify this just a bit, let me put uh, this term first on the other side. So 2TFE. Take this one next to the other side. Plus, now 3 fours are 12, so 12 fifths TDC. And then take this term to the other side, so plus 4TBD equals, well, I guess I'll leave this on this side. Well, I'm, I'm moving everything to the other side, right? So let's take this to the other side as well. So it'll be minus 4 times 200 is 800 equals 0. Okay. I'll call this equation 2, but notice I still don't have enough to start solving because I've got 1, 2, 3 unknowns and only 2 equations. So my last equation will be to some moments about the z-axis at A, and hopefully this will all work out. Well, about the z-axis, notice that BD, EF, and W are all z-direction forces, so they can't provide a moment about the z-axis. Only a component of CD can. Notice that the z-component of CD cannot, but the y-component can. So I need the y-component of TCD. That y-component would be, what, four-fifths. And then I need to know, will this cause a positive or negative moment? Well, I'm looking at a force in the negative y direction, and that will tend to cause a negative moment about z. What would the moment arm be? Well, it would be the four-foot length to axis y, right? So this is a negative thing, and I need a four-foot moment arm. And this is equal to zero. That's it. There are no others. In other words, if there's any tension in this 
cable, the whole body will tend to rotate. And it can't, so TCD must be equal to zero. Well, that makes things a little bit simpler because if TCD doesn't exist, if it's, or if it's zero, then from one we can calculate TFE. All we have to do is divide 400 by 4, move it to the other side, and we find that this is 100 pounds. Now that we've got TFE, we can go ahead and solve for TBD. Sounds like to be decided. I'm running out of space though, so well, maybe we can squeeze it in here. Let's try that. So what do I know? I know TFE, I'm looking for TBD still. So let's just divide through by four. So let's write TBD equals, I'll remember to divide by four. We'll move this to the other side, 800, but 800 divided by 4 would be 200. Move this to the other side, minus 2 over 4, so minus a half, TFE. TFE is 100, so minus a half, this is 150 pounds. So that's TBD. Okay. So we've got the tension in all three cables now. And basically, we could eliminate this cable, and everything would still be okay. Of course, you might not want to, because what if all of a sudden someone applies a force in this direction? Then the, the way that the forces uh, distribute through the cables would change. But for this particular situation, the sum of the moments yielded all of the tensions. Let's sum forces next in the x direction. Well, in the x direction, it looks like the only thing we have is ax. That was an easy one. AX is the only force, therefore it must be zero, otherwise the whole assembly would accelerate in the X direction. That was so easy, let's sum forces in Y and see what happens. Well, we've got AY. And notice that TCD is zero. We could say technically there's minus TCD, but not all of it, right? We only want four-fifths of it. But it's zero, and so AY is zero as well. Summing forces in the z direction, what do we have? Well, let's see, we've got az plus tbd plus tef, there is no tcd, minus w equals zero. And so, az would have to be equal to tb, well, negative tbd, minus tef plus w. tbd, 150, and that's a negative. TEF minus 100, W plus 200. Now what do we get? 150 minus 150 is, uh, I'm sorry, 150 minus 100 is negative 250, plus 200 gives us negative 50 pounds. So at A, the ball joint has to push down at this point, which should make some sense. Because think about it, this cable and this cable are pulling up with more force than the weight is pulling down. And so, of course, we'll have to push down at A as well. And that's it. That's all they asked for. They wanted the reactions at the ball joint and the tension in all the cables, and we've calculated them.